One small change that I'm making this year is last year I had all the irrigation going the long ways and the way the pumpkins are grown and oriented that meant that every vine that I buried had to go up and over every length of uh, irrigation. So by reorienting it so that the irrigation lines go crossways, the vines and the burying will be parallel to the irrigation so there won't be any overlap or a lot less. So kind of an annoying job to cut and splice all the irrigation, um, but I'm able to reuse pretty much all the material. It's just a bunch of work, but I think it'll save a ton of time and effort when we're doing the vine burying. So if you're putting your irrigation in for your pumpkin, my recommendation is go this direction or the direction that you intend to bury your vines rather than the length of the main vine. Both plants have been in now for a little over a week, be closer to two weeks, and they're doing pretty good. Decent sized leaves. Uh, just sort of starting to lay down and get moving. Um, you know, pretty consistent here. Uh, we just took the hoop houses out, but it's been warm. It's just still, they always seem to take a while before they really start to catch and get moving. Um, and we're not gonna fertilize or use any nutrients really this year just because we know we've got still way excess compost. So just kind of gonna get what we're gonna get. This is the uh, 2350 and same thing, looking pretty good. Leave color looks okay. And just starting to lay down. So we'll see. All right, it's May 23rd, and the pumpkin plants have just finally started to kind of catch. So it's taken a while, a little longer than I had hoped, uh, but that sort of always seems to be the case here. Um, but now they actually seem like they're starting to stretch. Each median distance is starting to open up, whereas early on it's really, really short. And uh, so I expect growth to sort of pick up now. Um, the secondaries aren't moving too much yet, but uh, they're all starting to kind of poke out. So this is the 1634, which is a cross between the 1885 and the 2350 Ginger. And over here is the 2350 Ginger. And both plants look to be pretty much the same, probably three, four feet. Um, so a little behind where we'd like to be at this point, but uh, just kind of is what it is and uh, Today I'm doing something a little different. I'm putting up some wind fence, but rather than putting up the wind fence around the whole 1500 square feet uh, I'm gonna put a wind fence up close because when the wind fence is so far away Last year we had a lot of really bad wind in June and the plant took on a lot of damage So I'm gonna do a tighter wind fence hopefully protect them when they're young. And then as they grow out, we'll move the wind fence further out. So a little bit of extra work, but hopefully it pays off to protect them when they're kind of the most vulnerable. It's now June 5th, and this is the 2350 Ginger plant. And we've had extended unseasonably cool weather for California for end of May and early June. So the plant is really not as big as we would have hoped at this point. We're still aiming for a pollination around the solstice. Um, and we're just starting to do our first vine burying. And one issue cropped up on this plant. We have a split in a couple spots really close to the crown. So I'm actually thinking about cutting this secondary off just because it looks like it's adding stress to that area and then I'll just have to rely on the next set of secondaries and in the short term it won't be great but I think in the long term we really want to keep everything around the crown intact. In California we don't have as many issues with moisture related diseases but a crack can turn into a split and that can really become a problem so I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so there it is, cut, and hopefully we'll 
get some healing there, and then this will become the first secondary, which will start to sort of train rearward, or that'll be the second, this will be the first. I think in the long run, it'll be okay. And here's the 1634, and it's looking a little bit better. Really good color in the leaves, very large. Uh, crown looks better, doing a little bit of vine bearing, but for the most part, just wanted to get some of this warmer weather and see it really start to take off. But it's got a good growing habit and a little sort of smaller wind protection has done a better job than going to the full size wind protection right from the get-go. All right, it's June 9th and the plant is about nine, 10 feet long. We have about 10 secondaries started. And there's a little pumpkin right there at the tip. Uh, probably not one that we're gonna use, but uh, there is a little pumpkin right there. And the story is continuing to be pretty much the same, which is uh, just not a lot of growth at the normal rates because there's just not a lot of temperature. The, the skies have been uh, cloudy and actually right now they're better than they have been for quite a few days. It's just cool and cloudy. So the plants are healthy, but not very big. So this is the 1634, which is a 1885 and a 2350 Ginger offspring. And uh, same story, just doing vine burying. Uh, I think on this one there's about 12 secondaries going and it's about 10 feet long. Um, and just kind of moving along pretty slow. So solstice pollination is gonna be tight, we'll see.